I hope in a couple of weeks we will be, but it's really great to see all of you here this morning. God calls us to worship with the song of the Lamb from Revelation 15. Great and amazing are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. Let's stand and sing together. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us together this morning that we might worship you. And we pray that over these next few moments that we spend together, that your spirit would move among us. That the songs that we sing, the prayers that we pray, the words that we receive would be pleasing to you. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and only Savior. Amen. Amen. Stand and greet your neighbor as we begin our worship today. That's great to be here. It's great to be here. Hey, Penny, good morning. Good to see you. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you, Grant. Hey, Katie. Good morning indeed, and welcome to worship with us today on this new day in the history of New Hope Church as we do welcome Pastor Chris Jacobson and his family, uh, his wife Sarah, and their children Henry Holland and Caroline. We're thrilled to have you all with worship, in worship with us today, whether you're joining us online or present here in the sanctuary. 
If you could do me a favor and please find those black registration pads in the pews, take those out, sign your name, a piece of information about yourself, make sure it gets passed all the way down the pew. And if you're uh, joining us online, check out our website, newhopeworship.org. Send me an email, palsma at newhopeworship.com. We really do appreciate the opportunity to welcome you as a part of our community here at New Hope. I also want to draw your attention to information about what's coming up in the life of our church. A reminder, mothers of all ages are invited to our MOPS MPR event. It's the Mother's Pep Rally that is happening this coming Friday um, at 7 p.m. So come on out to New Hope Church, invite a friend. The MOPS committee has a wonderful evening planned for all of you. New Hope Church is also in the midst of an outreach to our Franklin County Children's Services. We are supporting 55 high school graduates out of foster care, um, and we are looking for gift cards of $10, $5, $25 amounts to fast food places, and also $25 or $50 gift card amounts to Walmart. And then we're also asking you to write a note of encouragement to every graduate and just sign it, your friend at New Hope Church. Those can all be brought to the church here. They are due by next Sunday, so please bring those by next Sunday. Also, coming up, now that Chris is officially here, we need to make it official as a worshiping community, and we do that in our denomination with what's called an installation worship service. So that will be happening here at New Hope Church on Sunday, May 15th at 7.30 p.m. Everyone is invited. We hope you'll join us for that special event. Also coming up soon, our music ministry team is all putting together a Generations Choir event for Sunday, May 22. So check out the information in the bulletin about that. And then it is our privilege and our delight this morning to welcome new members as a part of our community here as well. So if you were just in the most recent spring discovery class with me, I invite you to come forward at this time and kind of stand before the congregation here. <laughs> It's all right, take your time, Barry. We are, <laughs> we are a patient people <laughs> as well. So allow me to sort of introduce to all of you, starting here on the left end, we have Ken, Barry, Zach, and Brianna, and their children, Jay and Drew. We have um, Grant, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> Grant, Katie, Deborah, Lauren, Gordon, Jennifer, and Scott. And we are thrilled to welcome you all officially as members of New Hope Church this morning. You have been through the discovery class with me and the elders over the past few weeks. You have learned who we are, what we believe, and especially how you have made us a better church by saying yes to this being your community. Exactly, I love you too, Jay, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> And so to show your commitment to us here at New Hope, Pastor Chris and I have a few questions for you this morning. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you rely upon him and him alone for your salvation? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments as the only rule for Christian faith and living? Will you confess Jesus Christ publicly before all people and, with God's help, seek to walk worthily in your Christian life? Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Will you please welcome our new members to New Hope Church. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. Welcome, Terry. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome Zach. Welcome, Terry. Welcome, welcome Brian. Welcome, Drew. Welcome, 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 welcome Grant. Welcome, Emily. Welcome, Keith. Grant, welcome. Welcome, Lauren. Welcome. Welcome, Jennifer. Welcome, Scott. Welcome. And I encourage all of you during our coffee hour after worship today to also greet our new members. You may all take your seats. And then Pastor Chris and I would like to invite all of the children forward for a special time with you. <laughs> Good 
Good morning, Lisa. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Anyone know how many days of school you have left? How many do you have left? May till May 22nd? Where are you? 28 days left? Where are you, John? 20. What are you, Jack? Somewhere around 20. So the countdown is officially on. What are you? 20 or 21, 18, I heard 18 from our youth out there. <laughs> They're also counting down the days. It's the month of May. Return the corner. You officially made it last month of school, and soon it's going to be summer and all of the fun, right? During school, you make a lot of friends, right? And new friends, but even during the summertime, you make new friends. And with this new month, we have a new friend at New Hope Church. <laughs> Can you all say hi to Pastor Chris? <laughs> Hey, everybody. <laughs> we are so excited. We get to keep Pastor Chris now. You might have met him back in February. <laughs> he now gets to stay with us Sunday to Sunday. And I know that Chris is excited to get to know all of you. And I hope that you'll say hi to him. And you'll say hi to his family, too, because he's got three kids who are excited to be friends with you as well. Well, sometimes in our friendships, we don't always get along with all of our friends, do we? Sometimes we have problems, we fight, but do you forgive each other? Yeah, do you, like, when a friendship's really, really strong, we always work together. Well, today, I'm going to talk with the adults about a story between two really good friends, Peter and Jesus. And when Jesus forgave Peter, even though Peter had once said, I don't believe Jesus is who he says he is. And this is how the story goes. Peter went fishing with some of the disciples. They fished from their boat all night, but did not catch even one fish. And then early the next morning, someone from the shore shouted, you have not caught any fish, have you? No, they replied, cast your net to the right side of the boat, the man said. Who do you think that man was? Jesus, yeah. <laughs> right. So as soon as they did, their net was full of fish. Then Peter knew the man was Jesus, and he jumped out of the boat and swam to shore. Jesus asked him, do you love me? And Peter said, you know I do. Jesus said, if you love me, then take good care of my people. Pastor Chris and I promise to do our best to take good care of you and everyone out here in our church. And I hope that you'll help us take good care of each other too. You think you can do that by being good friends to one another and always welcoming new friends into our community too. All right, well, let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Let's say a prayer. Jesus, we are thankful that you are our best friend and that you are always there for us. And I pray that you will help us continue to grow and learn and make new friends along the way. Bless these children now as they head off to Sunday school to learn more about you. In your name we pray, amen. All right, you may all head off to Sunday school. Have a good time. Is it off right now? Yes. <laughs> And while they head off to Sunday school, the rest of us have a very special opportunity to give out of a sense of gratitude to all of the gifts that God has given to us. We give not because the church needs money, not because God needs our money, but because we need it for ourselves. We need to be grateful for all that God has given. And so when we give, it's an opportunity for us to say to God, we trust. We trust that you are who you say you are and that you will take care of us no matter what. And so we have that special opportunity now. Someone, I don't know if it's deacons, ushers, whoever it is here. Ushers, all right, good. Hey, I'm new here, right? They're gonna pass the plates among you and the offering will be received.
about you, but I am getting excited for summer season. <laughs> and one of my favorite things about summer is having the opportunity to gather around the campfire. I've come to discover that one of the most ordinary sacred things that we do is gathering around a campfire together. It could be 90 degrees outside and still there's something beautiful about gathering around a fire pit. I've had conversations around campfires that range from silly to significant to spiritual. It was always a highlight on the youth mission trips to gather around the fire in Knoxon. It was always a joy as a camp counselor to gather at the end of the day and hear the stories of the trips that all of the youth had been on around the campfire. Fire is living and active and moving. There's something that helps us still still ourselves and slow down and pay attention to, I think, the movement of the spirit in our lives when we are gathered around a campfire. Today, our gospel story takes place around a charcoal fire, as Jesus once again shows his resurrected self to the disciples. Throughout the next few weeks, Pastor Chris and myself are going to be preaching on these resurrection stories, 
Easter doesn't happen on just one day of the year. Easter continues for several more weeks. And the Gospel of John, in particular, along with Luke, could tell us these stories of Jesus' appearance after that Sunday when the women fled the empty tomb. Last week, we looked at the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples in their locked room and showing Thomas the scars on his hands and his feet. And doubting Thomas becomes confessing Thomas, recognizing Jesus as his Lord and Messiah. This week, we encounter Jesus' conversation with his good friend, Peter. So I invite you to join me uh, in your Bibles. Turn to John chapter 21, and we're going to begin at verse 15 today. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your, o- your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you wish you, re- you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Good old Peter. (laughs) Peter, if you recall from the biblical story, is the one that Jesus calls from his life as a fisherman to come and fish for people instead of fish themselves. Peter is the one who first declares Jesus to be the long-awaited Messiah. It's Peter, whose original name was Simon, And that name Peter is given to him by Jesus, called the rock in Greek, because he will be the bedrock of which Jesus is calling him to build and grow the church community. Peter, who staunchly tells Jesus, though everyone else may betray you, I will not. I will stick by you thin, thick and thin. Peter, who draws a sword when the jailers come to arrest, and the chief priests come to arrest him, Peter The one who will defend Jesus to the death ends up becoming the one who denies he ever knew Jesus in the first place. For Jesus had told Peter when they gathered for that last supper, oh no, Peter, before the crock crows, you will deny me three times. And of course, if you recall the story as Peter follows Jesus after he's been arrested to the court of the high priest, he gathers around the fire pits and trying to listen for news of what's happening to Jesus. Instead, people start to wander over and take notice of Peter and say, wait a minute, aren't you that guy who was following this Jesus who's just been arrested? To which Peter went, oh, no, 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 that's not me. You have me mistaken with somebody else. Eventually, a second person wanders over and said, no, no, I remember seeing you with him and all of his followers. To which Peter adamantly says, nope, not me. You have got the wrong person. And then a third time, another one comes up to him and says, yeah, no, I'm pretty darn sure you're the guy that was with Jesus. To which Peter says, I do not even know the man. Stop asking me this question. And at that moment, the cock crows, and Peter realizes that everything Jesus had said to him did in fact become true. And I can only imagine Peter's despair and heartbreak in that moment as he realized what he had done. And then we don't hear about Peter. We don't see Peter at the crucifixion. We don't hear of Peter again until the morning of Jesus' resurrection. When Mary Magdalene storms into the room with the disciples and tells them, I have seen the Lord. At that, Peter and John run from the room, run to the empty tomb, and see for themselves the grave clothes lying in Jesus, nowhere to be found. 
And then Jesus makes another appearance to the disciples on the seashore. They'd gone back to what they knew as they waited for instruction for, from Jesus. And they went back to fishing. And Jesus greets them on the shore, and they have a breakfast picnic together out of fish. And then I imagine Jesus pulls Peter aside for this conversation that we just read in Scripture. And there's a parallel here in John's narrative telling between the three times Peter denied Jesus and the three times Jesus asked Peter that question, do you love me? Part of these resurrection stories, part of what we, Chris and I, will be talking about over the next few weeks is as Jesus continues to appear to the disciples, he is reforming them as a new community, a community that is meant to be called out and spread the gospel message. For the gospel message needs to continue beyond, beyond Jesus' physical presence amongst them. And so Jesus knows he needs to have these conversations with the disciples. He needs to reignite their faith, reignite their purpose, reignite their vision and their mission. And it begins here with Peter, the one who Jesus knew was called to carry out God's preferred future, God's great vision for the church and for the good news of Jesus Christ to spread. Sometimes we need those Peter-Jesus conversations in our lives, a moment where we can simply sit and be in God's presence. We need that reignition of the Spirit at work within us for our faith. A book that was extremely popular when I was in college, the same college that Chris and I went to, Northwestern College, it was called The Shack. I'm sure many of you recall this story. And it tells the story of a man named Mac who has become completely disenfranchised with the church and completely out of faith. For a tragedy had occurred in his life in the death of his daughter. And he wondered where God was in his life, and he wondered why God had allowed something so horrific and horrible to happen. And as the story unfolds, he wanders into the woods and finds a note that is said, come and meet me at the shack, love, Papa. And the writer begins a narrative where Mac encounters the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in a unique and remarkable way of simply being in their presence. And it's by being in their presence that Mac's faith begins to reignite, that he's able to wrestle with those why questions, able to sit in his sorrow and be surrounded by the community of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that allows him to be in that space to breathe, be in that space to just be and feel what he needs to feel, knowing that there is a God called to tend and care for him. Henry Nouwen, in his book, Out of Solitude, says these profound words when it comes to when we're in situations like Mac, like the book The Shack talked about. He said, when we honestly ask ourselves which person in our lives means the most to us, we often find that it is those who, instead of giving advice, solutions, or cures, have chosen rather to share our pain and touch our wounds with a warm and tender hand. The friend who can be silent with us in a moment of despair or confusion, who can stay with us in an hour of grief and bereavement, who can tolerate not knowing, not curing, not healing, and face with us the reality of our powerlessness, that is the friend who cares. Jesus is caring for his good friend Peter by simply asking him a question, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And we miss something in our English translations that is present in the Greek in the Greek, every time Jesus asks the question, do you love me, the word for love is agape. And Peter's response for the word love is phylos. And there's a difference between agape and phylos. Agape is God love, unconditional, unfathomable love. Phileo love is community love, brotherly love, the love that we are able to share with one another. So every time Jesus asks Peter, do you agape me? Peter says, well, I can't love like you love me, Jesus. There's no way I can love like you love, but I can love people the best 
that I am able to do so. So I will phileo, I will care for the brothers and sisters that you have given to me in all that I am and all that I do. Within that conversation, there is healing. There is transformation taking place in Peter's life. It is an act of forgiveness. It is an act of redemption. It is an act of reorientation of knowing that Jesus is the best friend that Peter ever had and will ever need. And Jesus offers that care in that moment. But beyond that, Jesus not only helps reorient and recenter and reground Peter in who he is, he also provides Peter with the vision. If you love me, if you're going to go out there and love people to the best of your ability, the best the Spirit is going to equip and empower you to do so, then feed my sheep and tend my sheep. Take care of the people that I am going to entrust in to you. Vision is one of those things where you are seeing a reality before it is a physical, tangible reality. It is a GPS marker. It is our guiding system. For us in the church, it is a way for us to stay grounded and center and knowing we're heading towards that future that God has planned for us. Knowing that we can't see all the steps that are going to get us from point A to point B, but we know that God will be there as part of the process. Part of my role and Chris's role as your pastors is to help articulate that vision for all of us here at New Hope Church. But it's not just our job, it's with the elders and the deacons, your consistory, that we help to articulate that to you. But then you also have a role in the community here as well to help us live out that vision, to help reorient and redefine that vision as needed. For New Hope Church, our vision is our mission statement. We are called to reach people for Christ, root people in Christ, and release people to serve Christ. How we go about doing that will change and ebb and flow depending on who we are as a body of believers and what is going on in our culture and in our world. God knows we've had to shift and change that vision directive over the last two years multiple times <laughs> throughout the pandemic and as this community has changed, as the leadership of this community has changed. And we will continue to do so. You heard me say to our new members that we welcomed this morning, we are a better church because you are here. We are able to carry out that vision that Jesus gives to Peter, but still gives us today to tend and feed God's sheep by doing it together, by working together. We may not always be able to see the little things that help create that vision into reality, but we're all part of it. A story is told of three builders, and a man came to oversee the building project and asked the three different builders what they were doing. The first man responded, well, I'm just setting bricks here and here and here. The second man responded by saying, oh, I'm building a wall. The third man said, I'm building a cathedral. <laughs> it's that third person who understood that concept of vision. We all have that role to play with little individual building blocks as this community. But we all are doing it so that we can carry out that vision that God has entrusted to us as a church. So whether you are baking cookies for our fellowship time after worship, whether you are donating a gift card to help foster children graduating from high school, whether you're writing a note of encouragement, whether you are checking in on someone at this church, whether you are donating flowers that help decorate our sanctuary, whatever little thing you may be doing, teaching Sunday school, helping out with VBS, going on the youth mission trip, all of those things add up to helping us identify our community and build our community here. One thing that is written on the top of all of our consistory meeting agendas is a quote from Proverbs 29, 18 that says, without a vision, the people perish. God has given us a vision as a church. And as God continues to form us as a new community along the way, we continue to articulate and redefine that mission to reach more people for Christ, root more people in Christ, and release more people to serve Christ. Jesus, in his conversation with Peter, reorients, reignites his faith, 
provides him with a vision, and then provides him with the most comforting words of all. Follow me. (laughs) This is not something we do on our own. (laughs) It is always by following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. As we talked about back in February and March when we did our sermon series on wandering through the wilderness, the people headed into the unknown. God led the way through the pillar of fire and the cloud. God always provided for them along the way. The people couldn't always see it in the moment, and oftentimes they complained as things were going on, but God continued to say, just follow me along the way. The promised land is there, the promise, and we will get there one day. One of the best activities that is a part of the Journey Spiritual Formation class that we offer here at New Hope Church is writing your faith narrative. It is a work that you spend all year on looking back in order to see where God's providential guiding hand led the way through every up and down and twist and turn in the road. And it's only in looking back that we can truly see that God was present at times we didn't even sense that God was present, that God was still working and formulating within all of us through the movement of the Spirit to carry out that vision. For New Hope Church, that began with a seed planted by Steve Norton and the Classes of Holland to bring this church here into Dublin, Ohio. And that community was first formed at Indian Run Elementary School. And then that community grew and blossomed to where they needed to to build their own facility. And they did so what we now affectionately call the Polar Bear Church over at the zoo. And from the polar bear church, the vision kept growing and expanding until we created this facility that we are in now. Not all of us were always part of every single one of those communities, but we are recipients who are sitting here today of the work of those who have gone before us. Today, we do begin a new community. It's a new community formed with Chris and I taking a co-pastorate role to lead you on this way. It is a new community formulated by our elders and deacons along with all of us together to steer the ship in the way that God is guiding us to go. At the end of the wilderness wandering stories, God pulled Moses and Moses' successor Joshua aside. And God said to Moses, you will not enter the promised land, but you will see it and you will pass the baton on to others to carry out the vision and the promise that I have made for the people. And then God said to Joshua, in the sight of all of Israel, be strong and bold, for you are the one who will go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their ancestors to give them, and you will put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Jesus says, follow me. That is the invitation we hear this morning. And so I say to Chris, I say to all of you, let us be bold and strong and go forth in the vision that God has entrusted to us. Amen. As we come before our Lord in a time of prayer, our prayers are asked this morning by Kathy Duncan for Kathy's mother, Mary Alice Barrett, who is in hospital in Worcester, Ohio right now. She's recovering from a bad fall that happened on Thursday. Prayers are also extended to the Gregory family. Um, Lisa Gregory, also a new member, unable to be with us this morning because she is with her husband, Dennis, in the hospital as he is quickly deteriorating from a long battle with cancer. So our prayers are for the Gregory family. We also uh, offer congratulations for all of our college graduates this weekend and then the coming weekends as well. And then the flowers on the communion table are lovingly given by Jean Hannigan in celebration of her husband, Rick Hannigan. If there is something in your life today that you would like a personal time of prayer, then I invite you forward to pray with me or Chris or members of our prayer team. There's something you're celebrating this morning that you would like prayer for. I invite you forward. But let us all now 
simply be in God's presence and take that time to pray. Let us go to God in prayer.
God of creation. We thank you for reminders all around us today of your faithful presence in our lives. That as the grass continues to green, the trees and flowers bloom and the birds sing, the bees buzz. All of this teeming life reminders of the new life that we have through your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in that that we celebrate in this season of Easter. And Lord, we rejoice with those who rejoice today, for those who are celebrating graduations, birthdays, anniversaries. And Lord, we mourn with those who mourn and suffer with those who suffer. We lift up to you those who are hospitalized, those who are in need of healing, those who are mourning today. We pray, Lord, for your healing presence to be with the people that are in our hearts and on our minds. And Lord God, we pray that that same healing presence would be present in our world today, torn apart and broken by wars that people inflict on each other, that powerful people that enact injustice against those who are weak. We pray for your spirit to bring about peace that passes all understanding in our world today. We especially pray for the ongoing situation in Ukraine. Lord, we pray for those who have been the victims of natural disasters, for those who are rebuilding after fires, hurricanes, floods, and earthquakes. Lord, we pray for the church in the world, especially for ourselves here at New Hope, but for our brother and sister churches in the Reformed Church in America, for those who are going to be traveling to the Regional Synod of Albany meeting tomorrow, especially for Pastor Sarah as she travels there. Lord, we pray that we as a church would catch the sense of mission that you have given to us, that we would be like Peter, loving and caring for the people that you bring into our midst and to those that you have sent us. And that we would be sent into the world, into our communities, our jobs, our schools, ready to be a living presence, Jesus in the world. And Lord, we ask all of this in the name of your Son, our only Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray in the words that he taught his disciples, our Our Father. Father who who art in in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we sing together our final hymn of the day. Thank you. 
could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to bear my sin and bear my shame. guiding you along the way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace. Go in peace. Just love and serve the Lord. Amen.